بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين الحمد لله so today is our first class for the second of two new classes here at Millground and this one will be kind of like a like the other one kind of like a guided reading through a particular text uh, although the, the point of the class is, you know, not to uh, necessarily do an in-depth study of the text, but we will use it kind of as a guide point uh, to, to take us through this. And the, and the idea was that uh, I thought it was important for uh, Muslims to have an opportunity to go back and refresh and uh, shore up their understanding of Iman of faith and of belief, particularly in this day and age that we live in, where there are uh, numerous challenges to that, particularly for uh, the so-called younger generation, although not exclusively for them, uh, and that it would be something that hopefully a whole family could uh, enjoy uh, studying and learning together. And uh, we'll try to do it in fairly con concise, uh, bite-sized pieces. And so in this particular one, is a reading of a uh, a well-known uh, text uh, that's called Al Risala, right? Or what you might call the work or the the message, the the you know some some say the epistle, the letter, right? It's a work of writing uh, by uh, a a scholar from uh, North Africa <coughs> whose name was Ibn Abi Zaid Al Qayrawani. Uh, is there, his 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 fuller name is uh, Abu Muhammad Abdullah ibn Abi Zaid al Qayrawani. Rahimahullah, may Allah Taala have mercy on him. And uh, this work, in particular, the intro to this work, what is sometimes called the Muqaddima of Ibn Abi Zaid, is a work that has gained uh, wide acceptance in our Ummah. Uh, from uh, whether you're a person who follows a particular madhab, of course, Imam uh, Ibn Abi Zaid was a Maliki from North Africa and was an Ash'ari. And however, <clears throat> this particular work has been accepted by uh, Ash'ari, Maturidi, um, uh, 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 Salafi. I mean, it's a work that has gained wide acceptance. Naam, sometimes called Malik as sabir as one person noted. He's sometimes called the little Malik uh, uh, in, in reference to Imam Malik uh, Rahimahullah who of course is the, the uh, eponymous founder of the Madhab uh, from Medina and the impact of Ibn Abi Zaid was so profound uh, that sometimes he was dubbed or uh, nicknamed the little Malik and so we'll kind of go through and use his as a guide, but I've interspersed through through that uh, some other things that uh, um, I, I thought would be useful for us to look at. As again, we talk about the 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 topic of faith, and again, some of the challenges to it. And so let me go ahead and share for those who are here in the Google chat. I'm going to share the PDF so you can kind of. Read along here. All right. So, um, a lot of this is going to deal with the topic of Eman. Eman. And so, we have to ask ourselves, well, what does the word mean? It is sometimes translated into English as faith. But then we need to ask ourselves, well, what does faith mean? Even in the English language, it is important for us to have an understanding of, well, what does that mean? Because we use these words sometimes interchangeably, faith, iman. 
And it's important for us to also have an, 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 uh, an understanding, well, what does that mean even in, in, in English? And do the two line up? Can they, you know, are we having, uh, 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 are we having a, a, a correlation here that matches up? And so in, in, in the word in, for instance, in English, faith, Assalamu alaikum girls, how are you? Faith can mean what to, you know, a matter of fact, who can tell me what does faith mean? When you think of the word faith in English, what does it make you think of? Anybody? You don't know? Dal, you don't know? What you believe in. Okay, faith could mean what you believe in. But we also have uh, like an adverb, right, to be faithful, right, to be faithful. So the word faith in English, while it does mean to have a set of beliefs, something that you believe in, but it can also be a, a, like an adjective, an adverb, meaning that to be faithful to something or to be faithful to someone. That means that you would not break a trust or that you would fulfill a promise or that you would be loyal or even honest or truthful. All of those things can be included in how we define and understand the word faith. And yes, it can mean what our beliefs are, but it can also mean to trust. Right, and also to have confidence in something. Faith in the English also means to have confidence in a thing. And so to be faithful to something or to someone or to a principle or to a club, right? You could be you could you could be in a soccer club, or if you're like Ward, you could be in some sort of Minecraft Roblox club, and you could be very faithful to that. Right, you will, you will, you will be committed to it. Right, you will pledge yourself, as I've said here. Right, and so it can also mean to trust and confide in. Now, that's how we understand the word in English, or at least that's some of the root meaning of the word in English. And so we have three words I want us to try to remember here, or rather, three articulations in the Arabic. And that is Amina. Can you guys say Amina? Can you say Amuna? And then Amana. Amana. Yes. And so those are three common articulations or three common ways we can say faith in Arabic. And likewise, it can mean to be faithful to something or to someone, and it can also mean to be trustworthy, right? It can mean to be trustworthy. The other meaning, however, that's really important that we don't quite get from the meaning in English that is in the meaning in Arabic, it means to be safe. So part of having Iman is, yes, we believe in Allah, and we trust Him, and we are loyal to Him, and we try to keep our promises with Him, but it also includes being safe with Him. But what are we safe from? What is the one thing that we want to one day Ultimately, what do we want to be safe from? Yeah. Safe from okay, safe from disbelievers, right? Ward. Safe from shaitan. Good. What about safe from the hellfire? We don't like to think about that a lot sometimes. It seems like a pretty scary place. It's even more scary than Halloween. But we want to be safe from any harm. And so what we gain by being faithful to Allah, what we gain by trusting Him, 
and what we gain from doing what he tells us to do and upholding and being loyal to him and being upholding our promises and our contract with him, that will allow us one day when we all have to go in front of Allah on the day of judgment to be safe, to cross the bridge to paradise. So an important part of faith is also to gain safety and to gain security. And so the Imam begins his book by, of course, praising Allah. And this is done because Allah himself praises himself in the Qur'an at the beginning of Surah Al-Fatiha. Who knows Al-Fatiha? Right? All right. So, right? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So the Imam, he begins his book by saying, Alhamdulillah. All praise belongs to Allah. And so this little book that he wrote, by the way, the Imam wrote this book when he was 17 years old, according to reliable sources. And he wrote it for young people to get the basics of what they would need to go and live a good life as a Muslim with confidence uh, that what they believed in and what they did, Allah would accept it from them. And so he begins with Alhamdulillah, Alladhi ibtada al-insana bi ni'matihi. He says that all praise belongs to Allah who began the creation of the human being by his ni'mah. This is a word in Arabic. Anybody know what the word ni'mah means? It's a really special word. It has many different meanings. Blessing, right? Sister Sarah said blessing. Yes. Um, right? It can also, the, the beautiful thing about the word ni'mah, and it comes from ni'mah, the verb ni'mah. So who can say ni'mah? Ni'mah. Very good. All right, ni'mah. So the word ni'mah, yes, it can mean blessing. But it also means to be provided for. It means to have all of your needs met. Right? Then the meaning of ni'mah means to have all of your needs met. As it was given, I can salam rahmatullah. It was told to us in a definition, an ni'ma man un'ima bihi min rizqi, right? Wamal. That means like to have all of your needs in terms of what you need to eat and somewhere to sleep and clothes to put on your back, but also some money to spend all of your needs. This is what it means to have a ni'mah, to have this kind of a blessing. So the imam is saying that Allah created us in the very beginning before time way back, so far we can't even remember, that he created us and he did so in such a way that all of our needs would be met. This is an important aspect for us to have faith in Allah, for us to believe in him, trust in him, have confidence to believe in him, have confidence to uphold our, our obligations toward him. Part of it is to understand that we will be provided for in this life. Now, there is a difference between needs and wants. Can anybody think of what a need is and what a want is? What's a need and what's a want? More. Like Give me an example. You're right. Right. A need is something essential, but what do you need? What do you got to have? Matter of fact, you can probably do with food longer than you can without water, right? Like we have to have water basically every day. I think we can go without, how long can we go without water? Anybody know? Yeah, like three days and then that's it. Like, 
And yet when Allah created us and put us on this planet, put us on this world that he made for us, what is so unique about this world compared to all the other worlds we've discovered so far? What is it? Oh, I thought you said, did you say? Oh, okay. Yeah, what's unique about it? Either one, go ahead. Dora, go ahead. It's what? Well, we have life, but what do we have a lot of on this planet? Water, because I said, what, we can't, we can't even go more than roughly three days without water. And yet, where is there everywhere on this planet? Water. And so when the imam is saying that Allah, when he initially created us, from the very beginning, all of our needs would essentially be met. Everything that we would need is here. Food, water. Now we talked about needs. What about wants? What are some things that we want? What do you want? Like we need food and actually we want food sometimes and water. And we also sometimes we want money. Right, we want money sometimes. Or sometimes we want food, but we don't even need it. We just want to snack on something, right? Everything that you and I will eat, any money that we will earn, it's all here. Now, way back in the day, we used to, our, our money, of course, and right, Matt can tell us better than anything, right, our money used to be gold and silver. Now it's paper, right? But even then, where does the paper? Like digitized computer somewhere. Right, now it's just, right? But think about it. Everything, even the digits on a computer or the paper money, where does paper come from? Trees, right? Trees. And computers are made out of what kind of material? Steel. Okay, steel. What else? Ward? Electrical magic. Okay. Dora, yeah. I'm Dahlia. Electricity, Nora. Like this, what is this? What is this right here? What is this made out of? Plastic. Anybody know what plastic comes from? Um, factories and stuff, and sometimes they do like plants. Yes, yeah, Ward. Oil. Oil, right? So, no matter what, the whole point is whether we're talking about gold, which we used to dig up out of the ground, or paper money that comes from trees. Or even, we said that what, we have digital money now, ones and zeros, but it's all on the computer and computers are made out of plastic and these things. Well, they all eventually come from here. They're just changed in some kind of way. The whole point, no matter what it is we have, whether it's a thing we need like food and water or whether it's something we just want, it's all here and it's because Allah provided it for us. When he, so when he says, all praise belongs to Allah, the one who, who began the creation of the human being by his ni'mah, that ni'mah means what we are all provided for. And so one of the names of Jannah, or one of the adjectives of paradise, is called what? an naim an naim So it has the same root word as ni'mah. And when we go to Jannah, what all of our needs will be fulfilled. So part of belief in Allah is to understand He is the one that provides for us both our needs, but also those things that we want and desire. So we go to Allah and to nobody else to get our needs and also to get our wants. It's perfectly acceptable to ask Allah, oh Allah, and, you know, if you were, if you needed food, okay, we ask Allah to provide us, but maybe you wanted something. I don't know. You wanted a new Xbox or you wanted uh, whatever it is, right? Who else are we going to ask? We, we ask Allah for everything, both our needs and our wants. And so that's why it's important to understand both of those. And so we said, what, the word ni'mah, that means to be everything will be provided for. And that's why some have said, what, 
that the meaning also of ni'mah is what? Is jannah and also maghfira. Also can mean Allah's forgiveness. Right? We said it sometimes we call it a blessing. It's the kind of blessing that Allah will forgive us when we do something wrong. He will forgive us for our sins. The next thing the imam tells us is that Allah, he is the one who what? Sawwarahu fil arham. That Allah is the one that makes the human being inside the, the womb, inside the, the stomach, inside the belly of his mother. All of us, at one point, were in the belly of our mother. Some of you guys were there more recently than me. I've been out for a while. That's why I got all this gray hair. I've been out on good behavior. Uh, and so he says, And he decided that all of us would come into existence. All of us would live by coming into life by way of our mothers. And he says, This is according to how he makes a dictate, how he makes a decision. Sometimes we call it wisdom. But wisdom, when we say Allah's hikmah, this is very different than a human being having wisdom. Human beings having wisdom means we know how to apply something. But Allah, when He decides a thing, that is the appropriate way that it needs to be done. It is the only way that it needs to be done. And so we are made this way also not by any chance. We are often told today that we sort of came about through some random bouncing around of atoms and molecules and some lightning in the atmosphere billions of years ago and we slowly... No, we came because Allah is the initiator. Allah is the creator of the human being and we are exactly who we are supposed to be. So also in the fact that he says, وَسَوَّرَهُ فِي الْأَرْحَامِ Each and every one of us is different. We are all unique. We all look a certain way, we all act a certain way, we all perhaps come from different places. We're all humans, we're all from insan, and yet how we are is who Allah made us to be. So when we talked about the part of faith that means to have confidence and believing in Allah, part of that confidence comes because you know I am not here by a mistake. I am not here by an accident. I was made by a decision by the same one who made the stars and the moon, the sun, the heavens and the earth. So I am not here by any accident. So I have confidence and belief in the one who made me exactly who I am. And alhamdulillah, I am satisfied and content with how Allah made me, even though I might look different than somebody else or you might look different than me. And so from this belief, right, from this we can have faith and confidence that Allah is indeed our creator. And then after this, the imam tells us, well, how do we come into life? As you can see, some of you now, you guys are old enough, you're in school, but look, we have like a couple little babies here. And so the imam talks about these different steps or these different aspects of life that we will live through. He says, وَأَبْرَزَهُ إِلَىٰ رِفْقِهِ He says that Allah then brings us all out from our mothers into the world, into Allah's gentle care. And by here, He is speaking about humanity as a whole. Yes, some people are born rich, some people are born poor, some people have more, some people have less, but as an entirety of insan, the human species, we are provided for. And so he says he brings him out into the world into Allah's gentle care. And he makes it easy for all of us to be provided for. If you think about it, again, more you guys than me because I've been out for a while, right? But all of us, when we were born, none of us could take care of ourselves. Even your moms, Right, your mom is here. When your mom was a little baby, she couldn't take care of herself. And yet Allah has made the human being in such a way that deeply instilled 
deep in our understanding of ourselves, almost like a natural reaction, we will care for babies. Right? We will care for babies. That's why, you know, they say Allah made children that they look super cute between the ages of zero and like four. I think after four, that's when like the maximum cuteness starts to kind of fade away a little bit. Right? And we find our children, especially for those of us that have children, we find them irresistible in a way because they're so cute when they're in that age. And that helps to increase the tenderness of care for them because the baby cannot care for itself. So the complete way that Allah creates us is that we come into the world to our parents, but in reality, when we're first born, they're strangers to us. We don't know who our parents are. We just came into the world. And yet Allah has created all of us in such a way that when we first come in and we're not able to care for us, He makes sure that we will be provided for because that is how he has created the human being. So as an instrument of his will, so to speak. And then makes it easy for us to be provided for. That he's made our mothers the ability to, to bear milk. That when we come in, we can't eat food. You guys can't even remember. All you guys eat now is Doritos and hot dogs and hamburgers and pizza. But we don't come into the world to eat. We cannot eat any of those things. Matter of fact, for almost a couple of years, we cannot eat any of those things. We just, the best thing for us is our mother's milk. And so Allah Ta'ala has created us and created uh, a system such that we will be easy to provide it for. Yes. It's like kind of a circle. Like if, like, let's say a girl is born, she's going to be the mother. And after her girl is Yes, it's like a circle. Who saw the Lion King? You remember that song, the circle of life, right? That's kind of, yes, it's true. Allah has made us like a circle or a complete system. Indeed, he has made it such that all of us will be provided for, boy or girl, right? Boy or girl, we will all, alhamdulillah, we will all be provided for. And then... We eventually start to grow up and we go beyond the baby phase and we have to start learning. You guys are in school. What grade are you in? Okay. Dahlia, what grade are you in? Kindergarten. Ward? Sixth grade. Man, okay. You guys are growing up kind of fast. So, alhamdulillah. He says, well, and so the next thing is that we aren't left by ourselves. This is the other important thing to understand about faith in Allah. That Allah made us and he caused us to come out of the womb of our mothers. And then we are brought into their care so that Allah can provide for us. But then Allah teaches, he teaches us things that we would not be able to know on our own. What is one of the things that we could not know on our own? Yes. Like how God was made, where did he come from? Or like, what did everything about? Like sometimes. Right, like Quran. To know about Allah, we would only be able to guess. Right? Ward. Right. If it wasn't for the Quran, we would have to just make guesses. Yes, Malik. We wouldn't know who all the prophets are. Right. But in, I mean, if it wasn't for the Quran, like for all of us are born now. What year were you born in, Malik? 2010. What year was, for instance, Prophet Ibrahim born in? Well, let's just say a pretty long time ago, right? We could probably guess like Prophet Isa, right? Alayhi salam, roughly what year was he born in? One. Like, let's say zero or one, somewhere around there, right? And we're in the, what year is it now? 2021. So if you're born in 2010, you said, right? And if you didn't have a book to tell you, how would you know for certain? We would not, that's some information we would not be able to have ourselves. So, yes. Where did the first humans come from? A third of the world. And why now? 
Allah created them, right? Exactly. How, how will we know? And this is, you know, we, we're constantly digging in the dirt, trying to find out about ancient civilizations. And that stuff is all cool and that's all great. But what we will never find out digging in the dirt is not only how did humans come about, but why? Right. Science is great for investigating many things, but often science struggles with the big why. Like, why do humans exist? How do humans exist? Well, we can also understand that by the Quran and by revelation as well, that Allah tells us he created the human being. But more importantly, why did he create the human being? Anybody remember from Surah al dhariyat why do we exist? What's the purpose of our existence? To worship him. I did not create the jinn or mankind other than to worship me. Now, we will never find that out, no matter how much dirt we dig out of the ground and sift through it. Right? Those are the kind of answers we will never be able to get to. Ward. Yeah, I like this kind of like, um, like science fiction stuff. Right. That life also has a purpose and it has a set of rules that come with it. No matter how much dirt we dig out of the ground, we may find some ancient civilization from 10,000 years ago, but it will not be able to tell us what is the purpose of life. Only revelation, meaning only Allah Himself can answer these kinds of really big questions. So he says, And the bounty, the favor that Allah bestows, that gives to mankind as a whole, is, is beyond count. It's beyond comprehension. And it's true. If you look at us, even though there is a part of us that is animal-like, there is no other organism on the face of the planet that is like us. We are indeed unique on planet Earth. And in fact, we seem to be unique on planet Earth and elsewhere. But we are distinguished also from the other animals in that while we are superior to the animals in other ways, we are actually very weak, right? We're very, have you ever heard of somebody getting attacked by a bear or a lion? Like, would you wanna fight a bear? No. Even if you had on some boxing gloves, right? What if you had on some football pads? No, I, I, even me, I'm a pretty big guy. I would not want to fight a bear. I think, I don't even think I could beat up a bear. I think I would lose, right? And so we're, you know, despite the fact that we are very smart and we build all kinds of cool stuff, right? We are physically very weak. Also, unlike the other animals, right? Have you ever seen a bear like, yeah, I mean, they go in a cave, but most of the time bears just kind of hang outside. Squirrels, they live out there, the birds. Most animals, they just live where they are. And they're okay. When winter comes, right, they, they, they grow their fur a little bit thicker and so. But for us, you know, if it starts to get 90 degrees, we get hot, we complain, we want to turn the air conditioning on. If it gets below 50 degrees, we complain, we need to put on a hat, it gets cold, right? So what, what is it about this uniqueness of that? We are also, we're weak because we're not really from here in a certain kind of way. Where is the place we're all supposed to eventually go back to? Yes. Like sometimes I could say Jannah, but it's also heaven. Yes, Jannah. Well, that, yes, Jannah. Yes, you could say you could say Jannah or you could say heaven. Yes, Ward. We come from Allah. We go back to Allah. But the place that Allah will place us in, at the very end of that journey back to Him, will be where Jannah. Right. So we have to remember that we're here, just visitors. We're just visiting. So the Imam continues, he says, what? So the way that Allah creates, the way that Allah makes things, 
is that he does so in such a way that it will kind of tickle our brains so that we will see the leftovers, so to speak, or the handiwork of him creating. So he says, He draws the attention of the human being to him, right? Draws it to him by how he has done things, how he's made the heavens, the earth, how he's made the mountains, the oceans, the birds, the bees. Yes. Yes, Allah is the creator, indeed. And so because of this, we look around in our daily life, we see all of the proofs and signs. He says, And so Allah has left no excuse for anybody to disbelieve in him, because then on top of it, he has sent messengers by his command and with his word to instruct us in how to believe in him, who are what? The best. The messengers and the prophets, they are the best of amongst us that Allah has, has himself elected to be sent to us to teach us how to believe in him and how to worship him. Yes, you had a question? Yes. Okay. Now we know the humans and the animals, but what about the like, um, like, how did he create the plant? How did he create like the whole everything? Well, how does Allah create anything? What is the Quran? How does Allah explain Himself? How does He do anything? Right. When Allah wants to do a thing, yes, Malik. That's true, but you say, well, then how did he do it, right? And Allah says, when he wants a thing to be, he says what? Kun fa ya kun. Can you say that? Kun fa ya kun. Kun means be. When Allah wants a thing to be, he simply says, be and it is. The other part about Iman, when we believe in Allah, I'll, when I want to do something, right, if I want to make a cup of coffee, which I did about an hour ago, right, I have to walk over to the kitchen, I have to pour some water into my kettle, I have to turn it on, I have to wait, I have to grind the beans. There is a process and a technique and many different things that I have to do in order just to make this one cup of coffee. When Allah wants a thing to be, He says be, and it is, and it is exactly how He wants it to be. So Allah does not do anything by any technique. Have you heard this word technique? Yeah. Right? Technique means like it's the how-to, right? Like any, how do you make a quesadilla? Anybody know? How, Ward, how do you make a quesadilla? You take a tortilla. Put on the pan. Oh, back up. Put the butter on the pan. Then put the tortilla on. See? When we want to do something. Now imagine if Allah was like, okay, I'm going to make man. Oh, wait, I got to go back and put the fire on. Then I got, right? When Allah wants a thing, it just be and it is. When we do it, it's not quite the same. Right? It's not quite the same. And everything that we want to do involves something that was already there. Right? If I want to make a tortilla, well, I got to go get some tortillas. Well, where do tortillas come from? They come from corn. Well, I guess there's got to be a farmer somewhere growing some corn. And even then, well, the corn plant, it lives and dies and it produces seeds and more corn. So, I'd like, I'm always relying upon other things, right? I need cheese. I don't know about you because there's no quesadilla. Well, cheese, well, I need cows. And then you got to take the milk and you got to make it into cheese, which is, I don't, I, I don't know about you. I don't know how to make cheese. That's kind of complicated, right? And then you got to have salsa and sour cream and guacamole and all these other things. And I like carne asada, right? And so I need a Mexican restaurant. That's what I would really do. I wouldn't even make it myself. I just go to a Mexican restaurant. It's a lot easier. So when we need something, right, we, we have to have all these things. When Allah wants something, what does he say? Kun fa ya kun. He says, be and it is. Yes. But he said there was like a sun. So who created 
created that time? Who created that time? Yeah. Well, what if there was even a time before time? And Allah is even before that. Because we understand Allah not by our brain, but by how Allah tells us about himself. So there's two names of Allah that will answer your question. What are the two names of Allah that will help answer this question? Anybody know? Allah is al awwal wal akhir al awwal Anybody know the Arabic letters? Wahid is name, right? So another, Wahid is one. But if we want to say the first, what do we say? Awwal. Awwal. Right? Like the second is what? Thani. So Allah is al awwal. He is the one of which nothing comes before him. He is the absolute first. Nothing comes before Allah. And Allah is the last. Nothing comes after him. We come into existence between these two points. We neither come before Allah, nor do we come after Him. So even in that time before us, or maybe even in a time in which there was no time, Allah was always there. Allah is always there. Because Allah is not created, and nothing can come before Him, nothing is above Him, everything is below Him, and He also, He surrounds everything. He is Al-Muhit. Right, and we'll get into this a little bit more as we go, but these are some of the names of Allah that are important to know because it helps us to understand Him not only better but correctly. So He continues by saying, "Fahada man wafqahu bi fadlihi." So therefore, Allah then guides those who He makes successful by His fadl, by His favor. And I'm going to pause in this one. He, then he says, What Allah will misguide a person. Both He will guide and He will misguide. Allah will guide or lead astray. And when Allah leads astray a person, he, the Imam says, He does it what? Anybody know the word adal? Right? Ju justice. Yes. Right, to be fair or to be just. That means if Allah guides a person away from the straight path, that it is something that Allah does justly, that Allah would never do so, and it would be unfair to do so. So Allah tells us in the Quran, Allah says that He is the one who has created all human beings, and some of you will be believers, and some of you will not. And for those who are not, and those that Allah decides to lead astray, we have to accept it that Allah does so always with adal, with justice. And that is what a person has earned. Now, as we said, when you call this word adal, we call this word justice in the English language. But let us look really quickly to understand sometimes Allah may do a thing or declare a thing to be. We might not understand why that is, but we understand that Allah does so by His hikmah and also by His adl, that Allah is just. So if we look, for instance, at the 65th verse of Surah Al-Kahf, this is in the 18th chapter, and this is the interesting, this is one of several stories about Iman, about faith, in which Moses, Musa alayhi salam, he and his companion, they met a man where two bodies of water came together. Anybody remember this man's name? Al-Khidr. Anybody? Right? So he meets Al-Khidr. فَوَجَدَ عَبْدًا مِنْ عِبَادِنَا and he, Allah says that what? And Moses, Musa alayhi salam, he met somebody that Allah, he calls al-Khidr, he calls him what? Abd, just as a, a worshiper of, of us, a slave of ours, right? وَآتَيْنَاهُ rahma, And that we gave him mercy, we were merciful to him, مِنْ عِنْدِنَا 
وَعَلَّمَنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّا عِلْمًا And that he gave to Al-Khidr some special knowledge. Yes. I just mentioned um, the Qur'an, he said a little bit about um, Papa and Khidr. He doesn't say Allah about him. In fact, we don't even know if he's a prophet. Right? This is a disputed thing. Some have said that indeed he could have been one of the NBA, and others say, no, it is as Allah describes him, is simply Abd min ibadina. He's simply a worshiper of those who worship, and that we were merciful to him, and what? That وَعَلَّمَنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّا عِلْمًا And that we gave or imparted to Al-Khidr some special knowledge. Yes. There was Moses, yes, Musa alayhi salam. Yeah, that's what we're just going to talk about right now. Right, Al Khidr, he killed a little boy. Maybe even your age. Well, no, he would be evil, right? And so that's my whole point. Sometimes Allah may do a thing. Why did he do it? The ability to understand that sometimes is outside of our ability to know. And in fact, he says to Moses, alayhi salam, قَالَ لَهُ مُوسَىٰ هَلْ أَتَّبِعُكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُعَلِّمَنِ What? مِمَّا عُلِّمَتُ رُشْدًا Moses says to him, can I follow you? I would like to be able to follow you so that you could what? You could teach me mimma ullimta rushda of what Allah has given you in terms of correct guidance. But however, Al-Khidr says to Moses, he says to Musa alayhi salam, he said, Qala innaka lan ma'i sabaran. You will never be able to be patient with me. You will never be able to take it because I'm going to do some things. You're going to see me do some things. You will not be able to be patient with, right? And how could you possibly have any sabr? How could you possibly be patient with something that you don't have any experience with, right? It's like when your little sister... Like she runs around and does stuff and she drives you crazy and she drives you crazy. And But your mom always seems to be calm somehow. You don't have any experience with that, but your mom does, right? It's the same way. And so when he says, you will not be able to be patient with me, then they come upon what, you know, where he says, hatta idha, uh, laqiya ghulaman. Then they come upon, he finds his little boy and he says, you know, فَقَتَلَهُ uh, uh, and that he kills this little boy. And Moses, Musa alayhi salam, is outraged. <laughs> Have you killed a pure, innocent child? How could you do that? <laughs> right? Without that one having done anything wrong. You know, <laughs> you've done something horrible. And so he explains to him, he says, وَأَمَّا الْغُلَامِ فَكَانَ أَبَوَاهُ مُؤْمِنَيْنِ he, he, Al-Khidr says to Moses, right? And this is about what? Faith, iman. He says to Musa alayhi salam that his parents were good believers. And he says that he was going to grow up and be an evil, horrible person that might cause them such distress that would cause them distress in their iman. And also that no matter what, that was the fate of that child. That there was no way out. That there was just that well, that's what that person was going to be. We have to accept that sometimes. Part of faith is to accept what we call the qadr of Allah. What? Sharrahu wa khayrahu. We have to accept the good of it and the bad of it. And though, so... That's one inter this is one story that he just gives us to contemplate, to think about that when Allah decides a thing or does a thing, it doesn't mean that we will always understand it, but we have to accept it. That's part of having faith. And so as we get here to the end of the first part, he says, Well, yes, 
The other part then, by having faith in Allah, it makes it e Allah makes it easy for the believers, right? For them to to come to obedience, to come to doing what Allah has commanded us. And that Allah is the one that has made our hearts open and be inclined towards a dhikra. What's dhikra? A dhikra. Anybody know? Has anybody heard of the word dhikr? Yeah, what's dhikr? Yeah, dhikr means to remember. And so like after we pray, sometimes we say what? Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, astaghfirullah, right? We say astaghfirullah how many times? Well, three. we could say it three times after the salah. And then we say subhanallah 33 times, alhamdulillah 33 times, right? Allahu Akbar 33 times, right? This we call dhikr. But a dhikra is another word for the Quran, right? So Allah is the one that when we are obedient to him, and we are faithful to Him, and we trust in Him, and we are confident in Him, then He will continue to open up our hearts to the truth of His book, right? And therefore, they then, they believe in Allah, one, by their tongues, meaning they say the shahada. What's the shahada? Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Right? So, fa'amanu billahi bi al-sinatihim natiqeen. They say that they believe in Allah and they say it on their tongues. Wa bi qulubihim mukhlisin. And that they're sincere in their hearts. Wa ma atathum bihi rusuluhu wa kutubuhu amilin. And that whatever it is that Allah has commanded them to do, Praying. What are the what are the five pillars? What's the five pillars? Number one. Uh, what's the number one? Shahada, which we said what? Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. No, it's number two. What's number three? Zakat. Right. What's number four? Yeah. What do we do in Ramadan? We fast. And what's the last one, inshallah? Ward? No, no, we did. That was that was number two. We got to go where? Hajj. Right. So whatever that Allah has commanded them to do, what? They are amilin. They do it. Meaning they fulfill all of those things we have to do. The shahada, the salah, the prayer, the zakat. We have to purify our wealth and give some of it to the needy. We fast in the month of Ramadan, and insha'Allah, we go on Hajj, we go to the house of Allah uh, in Mecca. And so, he says, and so to accomplish these five pillars, he says, what? تَعَلَّمُوا مَا عَلَّمَهُمْ They learn, they study their religion, meaning what he taught them to do. وَوَقَفُوا عِنْدَمَا حَدَّ لَهُمْ And that they stop at the limits. They don't go to excess and thinking about things. They they focus more on their belief and their actions. Just as Allah says in Surah Al-Asr, Wal-Asr, Inna al-insana lafi khusr, Illa al-ladhina amanu wa amilu sarihat. Right? Wa tawasaw bil haqli wa tawasaw bil sabr. So we focus on that. And then the, the, the last part he says here, And that they are which means that they are so content that they feel rich. They are happy and content with whatever Allah has made halal. What does halal mean? True halal. Halal means... <laughs> Hala ward. Something that is uh, allowed in the religion. Yes. What were you going to say, man? Uh, like something that's like okay and like it's fine. Yeah. Or I'm going to say another way is halal. It looks like if an animal is slaughtered the proper way. Well, that just means like if the if the if the meat is slaughtered in the proper way, it's halal, meaning what we can eat it. Yeah. 
And if it's not, we can't eat it. Right. So, right. It means permissible. It means we can do it. Are bananas halal? Yes. Are Doritos halal? Yes. Man, you guys said that real quick. Uh, uh, what about, uh, is a Philly cheesesteak halal? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm just making sure because um, I'm getting hungry. All right. So you're right. it means that what? When you have faith in Allah, then you are satisfied with whatever Allah has said you can do, and you, are, you stop and you are content with whatever he said don't do. Because there are two things that the Prophet ﷺ came to teach us, that the Qur'an came to teach us, that Allah taught us is what? There are some things that are halal and some things that are haram, right? Those are the two big categories. Now, which category is bigger, halal or haram? Exactly. There's way more that's permissible, and there's only a few. What's a few things that are haram? Eating pork, gambling, gambling. Nura, stealing, stealing. Nura. Um. What's that? <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, okay. Ward. Um, like, um, yeah. Well, to drink alcohol, right? But now, if you go to the doctor's office. Anybody ever had a shot? Yeah. I hate shots, right? When they before they give you a shot, what do they rub on your shoulder? Alcohol, right? And sometimes it stings, right? Right. So when we say alcohol is haram, what do we mean? Do we mean rubbing on your shoulder, or do we mean drinking? Drinking alcohol, right? So we are happy as Muslims. Whatever Allah made halal, we are happy with, and whatever He has permitted, we are happy and we stay away from. So that takes us to the end of the first part of our presentation. Uh, and so we will continue next week. Any questions before we break to pray? Yes. Are also cheating, backbiting? Yeah, those things are all haram. Yes. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Me too. I don't like shots. Yes, they're traumatizing. Yes, Nura. Right. Yeah, those are all good. You guys got lots of good answers. So we're we're gonna finish our. Uh, lesson today, we're all going to say Al-Fatiha. You guys ready? All right. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahmanir Rahim. Maliki Yawmiddin. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem. Sirat al-ladhina an'amta alayhim. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله رب العالمين وجزاك الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله